Hello everyone, I am Commander Adams with the Auburn Police Department and I'm here to talk to you about House Bill 1310. We are going to do a four part series about the legislative updates and we hope that you watch all of them and see my face four more times. With House Bill 1310, it is about use of force and police when we uh, effect an arrest. So currently we have to have probable cause to uh, use force when making an arrest and we could do so to protect against the imminent threat of injury to the officer, another person, or the person whom we're using force against. Also, we are uh, required to use all de-escalation techniques and tactics available to us at the time, such as creating time, distance, using cover, uh, designate one officer to give commands to the suspect to avoid confusion, and just use best practices when dealing with people and affecting an arrest. Another tool is to call crisis intervention or mental health professionals. Uh, unfortunately, they will not come out, in my experience, to those kind of calls because we have an undetained subject who is possibly combative, possibly has weapons, and is unrestrained. When we call the mobile crisis team or other resources, they always ask if the person's restrained or not, and if not, they will not come out, leading us, the police, to deal with the problem and come up with a solution on the fly. Again, with those situations, we take as much time as possible, and if that person that we are trying to effect an arrest against is no longer a threat of harm. There's no Im imminent threat to the person, to the officer, or to any innocent victims. It's suggested that we just leave the area and file charges on that person through our court system and do not take them into physical custody to avoid using any force. So, for you as a citizen, what does this mean? It means that, unfortunately, we will have more officers tied up on a single incident than in previous times. Therefore, it will delay our response to getting to you when you call 911. It also means that some calls that we used to respond to, such as non-criminal activity like welfare checks of a person sleeping in the park or someone sleeping in a vehicle will be calls we no longer respond to because we, the police, do not want to be that aggravating factor that causes force to be used. Some people are more cooperative when they are contacted by a citizen than they are a person in uniform. That person we're contacting might have a warrant for their arrest and when they see us, their adrenaline gets going and it's fight or flight which causes us to have to use force to take them into custody. When our firefighter friends or other me uh, medical services show up, that person is not going to go to jail. They're not going to get arrested. Therefore, they are at times most likely to be more compliant than they are with the police department. In this video, you heard me talk about probable cause. Probable cause in the police academy, we talk about more likely than not that someone has committed the crime, meaning 51% most likely that they committed that crime. When we have probable cause, we can use force. But what if we don't have probable cause? What if you were a victim of a crime and you give us a description of this suspect? We see that suspect walking down the street, but yet we don't have probable cause for them at that time. We have what we call a Terry stop. A Terry stop means that we can stop and detain someone while we investigate a possible crime. Similar to a traffic stop. When we do a traffic stop and we pull you over, it's a Terry stop. We stop you for a brief amount of time to determine if you committed a traffic infraction or not, or maybe even a criminal traffic offense, such as reckless driving or something else. If we are at a Terry stop and we want to detain that subject, we no longer do, can do so with using force. We can ask them to comply, but if they choose not to and walk away, we cannot use force to keep that person there. If you are a victim of a crime and another officer is speaking to you trying to develop that probable cause and we do not have it yet, I can't stop that person that possibly assaulted you, stole from you, or, or victimized you in some way, shape, or form. That is just one of the many things we are going to have to struggle with and adapt to as police officers in this state. So looking at our data, in the city of Auburn last year, we had just under 74,000 calls for service. Out of all those calls for service, on 0.24 of them, we used force against the individual, which we document in our force reports. That means one out of every 413 contacts force was used. And you're probably thinking to yourself, that's a lot of force being used. Well, a use of force is anything more than a, a simple escort hold, such as I place someone into handcuffs, grab them by their arm, and guide them to my patrol vehicle. That is an escort hold. If someone is resisting arrest and I have to use other force to overcome their resistance, that triggers us doing a force report. Also, if I arrest someone and they complain that the handcuffs are too tight or that their shoulder is hurt, or if they take it upon themselves to start hitting their head on the back of my patrol vehicle and injure themselves, that's going to cause me to do a force report even though 
I did not cause any injury to them. It was self-inflicted, but yet it needs to be documented anyway. These are just a few of the things that are going to change in the Auburn Police Department as we deal with these new house bills that have come along. And if you would like more information on this house bill and to read it in its entirety, click the link above. Also, we will be rolling out more videos this week and you'll be able to see me again talking to you, so stay tuned.